All glories to the symbol of devotees. All glories to the symbol of devotees. All glories to the symbol of devotees. All glories to Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, entitled Creation of the Fourth Order. Chapter 25, The Characteristics of King Paranjana, from text 15. Nida Svatika Vaidurya, Mukta Maraka Tan Runai, Kripta Harm Yastalim Diptam, Shia Bhagavatim Eva Eva Nila Spatikid Vaidurya Mukta Maraka Tarunai Kripta Harmyas Dalim Diptam Shia Bhagavatim Eva 
Nila seperti kedai doria. Nukta mereka tarunai. Kutta harm yastalim diptam. Shia bhagavati mava. Word by word. Nila sapphires. Spatika crystal. Vaidurya diamonds. Mukta pearls. Marakata emeralds. Arunai with rubies. Kutta bedecked. Harmyastalim. The floors of the palaces, deep dam, lustrous, Shia with beauty, Bhogavatim, the celestial town named Bhogavati, Eva, Eva, like. Okay, translation. The floors of the houses in that city were made of sapphire, crystal, diamonds, pearls, emeralds, and rubies. Because of the luster of the houses in the capital, the city was compared to the celestial town named Bhogavati. Purport. In the city of the body, the heart is considered to be the capital, just as the capital of a state is especially gorgeously filled with various high buildings and lustrous palaces. The heart of the body is filled with various desires and plans for material enjoyment. Such plans are sometimes compared to valuable jewels such as sapphires, rubies, pearls, and emeralds. The heart becomes the center for all planning for material enjoyment. Okay, let us read one more. Sabha chatvaras ratya bir akritayata na nai Chaitya Dvaja Pataka Bir Yuktam Vidruma Vedibihi 
In that city, there were many assembly houses, street, street crossings, streets, restaurants, gambling houses, markets, resting places, flags, festoons, and beautiful parks. All these surrounded the city. Purport. In this way, the capital is, is described. In the capital, there are assembly houses in many squares, many street crossings, avenues, and streets, many gambling places, markets, and places of rest, all decorated with flags and festoons. festoons. The squares are surrounded with railings and are devoid of trees. The heart of the body can, can, can be compared to the assembly house. For the living entity is within the heart, along with the Paramatma, as stated in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15, text 15. Sarvasya chaham hirisandavishta matasmatir ganam apohanam cha. The heart is the center of all remembrance, forgetfulness, and deliberation. In the body, the eyes, ears, and nose are different places of attraction for sense enjoyment. And the streets for going hither and thither may be compared to different types of air blowing within the body. The yogic process for controlling the air within the body and the different nerves is called sushumna, the path of liberation. The body is also a resting place because with when the living entity becomes fatigued, he takes rest within the body. The palms and the soles of the feet are compared to flags and festoons. All right, so tomorrow is text 17. For verse writer, you. Text 17. So <coughs> and the speaker. <laughs> speaker and writer. Om Ajnana Divadandasya Giranjana Shalakaya Chakshulan Malita Mirita Smai Shri Gurve Namaha Mukam Karitvacha Lampankam Langai Te Giri Mya Kripa Tamaham Vande Shri Gurun Dita Nam Banja Kapta Dibisha Kripa Sindh Vaivacha Patita Nam Pavani Biva Vaishnava Biva Namana Maha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pramanita Nanda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shivasari Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I gotta read the translations again. The floors of the houses in that city were made of sapphire, crystal, diamonds, pearls, emeralds, and rubies. Because of the luster of the houses in the capital, the, cap the city was compared to the celestial town named Bogavati. In that city, there were many assembly houses, street crossings, streets, restaurants, gambling houses, markets, resting places, flags, festoons, and beautiful parks. All these surrounded the city. So you get my spiritual master's emails, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. I just wanted if it, that one about Jewel and Yatra that he sent out recently. Yeah, that'd be sorry. So, um, we're continuing to hear <laughs> the allegory of uh, King Parenjana, told by Narada Muni. And as, uh, as the account where the allegory continues, we'll see uh, more and more, or also Parenjana will see more and more how this, how Narada Muni is talking about him. <laughs> and how also, devotees have mentioned in previous classes how this Paranjana, it's also uh, referring to, to us or to the living entity within this world who's trying to enjoy uh, on the material platform. And how over time we see that, you know, by Narada Muni's preaching, how it's, thank you, how it doesn't, uh, how it doesn't work. I mean, there's certain, you could say, yeah. I mean, we've been talking in the last class that there's certain, yeah, pleasures to to be had in this world, but um, there's also <laughs> the, the flip side of the coin, you know, pain, which kind of messes up the pleasure side. Anyways, we'll get more into that in just or 
that and other things in just a minute, uh, not just that, but you know, discuss other things as well about this uh, in relation to this verse, these two verses and these two purports. But before we do that, um, my it is uh, Jewel and Yatra. So my spiritual master sent out a little uh, short uh, reflection in relation to Jewel and Yatra. So I'll just read that, quoting from Prabhupada's books, his reflection. Today we begin Julan Yatra, which is steeped in the moods of Vrindavan. When I first began reading Srila Prabhupada's books, I was struck by the fond description in the introduction to teachings of Lord Chaitanya. So this is uh, excerpt here. Actually, the, the, Vrind uh, the Vrindavan on earth is as good as the spiritual Vrindavan. And therefore, Krishnadas Kavaraj Goswami says that Underneath one of the desired trees of Vrindavan, there is a nice throne decorated with valuable jewels on which Radharani and Krishna are seated. And his dear friends, the gopis, are, are serving them. Somebody is singing, somebody is dancing, somebody is offering betel nuts and refreshment, somebody is decorating with flowers. In India, it is still a fashion of, of recreation to sit on a swing. And if it is moving, it is very refreshing. Now it's warm, right? You're moving in the air. Refreshing. Uh, in every home they have a hanging throne. And when a man comes home, if practical, it is moved from time to time. And he becomes refreshed. And you see this sometimes you go to the, right, Guj, specifically Gujarati's houses. And they have that. You see, you go to Bhaktivat Sal's house. He has one of those. <laughs> nice kind of. <laughs> Guess when he goes back and it's hot, he just <laughs> anyway, swings. So similarly, the same system prevails, especially in the month of Shravan, July, August, when there is the function called Julan. During Julan and, all, Julan and all the houses, not only in Vrindavan, but all over India, the people hang thrones. In every house and village, they place Radha and Krishna and decorate them with flowers and move the throne and offer dancing and kirtan. The temples are decorated and thousands of people come as spectators. Generally, people go to Vrindavan at that time. Krishna and Radharani are seated on the throne, surrounded by his friends. And then he says, and then, and my spiritual message says, and leading into these two paragraphs, quoting Prabhupada again, there's an Acharya who describes Vrindavan. When my mind becomes cleansed of all dirty, dirty hankering for material enjoyment, then I shall be able to see Vrindavan. So Vrindavan is actually experienced by persons who have finished with material enjoyment. Everything is spiritual. This becomes revealed as you become more Krishna conscious. As you become more advanced, everything is revealed to you. And then what my spiritual master ends it with, he, he says, Although I'm still waiting for that qualification and that revelation, even in my present state, I can, by divine mercy, relish some of the flavors of Vrindavan during Julan Yatra in Carpentaria. Hare Krishna. And there's a nice picture. I guess we could pass the picture around because it's a picture of his deities. I don't know. Can you make this color? Okay. Yeah, maybe we could pass it around because it's a nice picture of his Govardhan Shilas on a little swing. So, it's nice. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is in real time, right? Yeah. Yeah, he sent this out, yeah, a few, a f a few days ago for Jula Yatra with all the uh, different... Um, you know, holidays and this, and he'll send something out to his email group. But uh, yeah, he put attached a picture of his little uh, Govardhan. She was on the swing, you know, there. So nice. <coughs> so, so yeah, you have um, you have uh, this purport here. It's saying that the heart in this an allegory says. Is is a place where all the desires and plans for material enjoyment are um, are stored. So uh, you could say the process of Krishna consciousness is we say expunging these material desires. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Expunging these material desires, uh, getting rid of them, and in this way one could actually uh, appreciate uh, Krishna more and more and more to the degree one's free of material desires, they're able to appreciate Krishna more and more and more. Just like somebody who's really full of material desires and just really uh, an illusion, 
what can they appreciate, for example, about Jewel and Yatra? They can't. <laughs> they think, oh, look at these, look at these guys, and you know they have this swing, and they're, and they're swinging, um, and they're swinging these little, you know, statues. What does that have to do with anything? You know, they, they, it's very strange to them. They can't understand. Uh, Because it's a different, you know, they're in a different mode, na- namely the mode of, of ignorance, <laughs> or mode of passion. And, um, and therefore, you know, higher things they can't, they can't appreciate. They can't appreciate finer things. What to, speak of, what to speak of Krishna. And just as Prabhupada would tell that story when I think Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and some of his disciples, maybe just his disciples, but they're in Burma. And they were, you know, establishing a temple there, and then they were cooking in the kitchen, all types of, you know, nice, you know, ghee is pleasant, you know, s- s- has a pleasant smell or scent, you know, when it's cooking, at least for those uh, in sattva gun. But uh, yeah, they're cooking, and naturally, when you cook pores and different things, it really, you know, uh, permeates. Is it Perme- per- permeates? Permeates the air. You know, it goes all over it, and you know, they they. People understand that, like you go to a mall or something, and you walk by, and they're pumping out uh, cinnabon. cinnabon, you know, the the scent, you know. Oh, people are attracted, right? So, but naturally, when you cook, that happens. So, devotees were doing that, you know, cooking pores and different things and ghee, <laughs> and then the neighbors are complaining, oh, horrible smell, you know, they're you know, blocking their nose, and it's, it's a stench, you know, it's disgusting. That's what they're thinking, you know, locking their doors, locking their windows, and oh no, you know, burning their interesting forms of incense, whatever they were doing. But later, Prabhupada explained that these people, uh, not later, but on, on, you know, special occasions, whatever, sorry, but they they would take all the, um, you know, dead animals in the neighborhood, you know, put them in a, pot or some type of, you know, so they could decompose, and then they would take that, and then on special occasions they'd take it out and, you know, sprinkle it on their food and all that. So, it's a, it's, in other words, they were in ignorance, and therefore they couldn't appreciate (laughs) sattva, what to speak of uh, transcendence. So, to the degree one is, um, one is, yeah, not situated in higher modes or not situated in and uh, not not having a pure heart then they can't they can't appreciate these things oh like jewel and yatra it's uh it's boring or or it's uh can't appreciate on different levels one devotee was telling me how one time he joined the temple and he was a uh, uh, he was a brahmachari you know new brahmachari in the temple and he was telling me that how at one particular point, he really scared himself because he was in the temple room and in Mangalarti, and then this like this this wave of of boredom um, uh, engulfed his you know consciousness. He, be, he, st- he realized, oh, I'm I'm bored. You know, I'm standing in Mangalarti. I'm looking at the deities. I'm hearing the kirtan, but I'm feeling bored. And he said, this is terrible. You know, what's wrong with me? Why am I feeling bored? You know. In other words, he wasn't appreciating, because boredom means you don't appreciate something. Like, uh, you know, if you appreciate something, like a, you, you put a gambler in a casino, they're not going to be bored. I mean, they're, you, know, they're, you know, their eyes become wide, their senses become alert, you know, they're, they're into it, you know. Or if you put a Facebook addict, you know, in front of Facebook, you know, they're not bored, you know. They know what to do. Um... And so on, so on, like that. So, boredom is a sign of lack of appreciation. Um, so, so, anyways, he he's still a devotee, and he got over it, and <laughs> he's quite advanced now. But, uh, and I'm sure he was then too. But you know, anyways, just going through that. Um, but 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 yeah, we shouldn't feel. That you could say that yeah, the a boredom. There's actually there's actually one philosopher. They said, boredom is the root of all evil. You know, they had this. Now, whether it is or not, I don't know. But in some ways, yeah, you could say that makes sense. 
boredom's re- you know people are bored okay let's let's do something let's do something destructive let's do something you know something fill our time so within krishna consciousness uh if we are feeling bored or not enthused uh that means you know the the heart needs to be cleansed more because we shouldn't feel bored. We shouldn't feel bored during Mangalarti. We shouldn't feel bored during any devotional process. Because it's, it's supposed to be uh, a lot enlivening. And um, especially enlivening, you could say, is uh, preaching or, or, or spreading Krishna consciousness. That's supposed to be especially enlivening for devotees. Just like, um, I said this before, but my spiritual master, he was there in, in Mumbai, and was, I, I was actually surprised because I didn't, because there was times where Prabhupada actually spent, which I didn't really know, but Prabhupada spent a few months there in Juhu, which I didn't know, because I thought he was always, you know, Prabhupada was moving a lot, but there was, a, there was at least one time where he stayed there, like a few months. And my spiritual master would go out and, you know, preach in the city, and he would come back and he, and he would report to Prabhupada every night, you know, how, how it went. Um, so then one time he came back and he was, and he was saying, Prabhupada, I, I, I really like this preaching. I really like this preaching. I really like to preach. And Prabhupada said, oh, no. He said, not that you like preaching. He said, uh, preaching is your life. You know, preaching is our life. So it's not that we just, um, not that we just like Krishna consciousness, but but Krishna consciousness is our life. Or not that we just like Krishna, but Krishna is our life. Or not that we just like preaching, but, but preaching is our life. And that is needed. <laughs> because um, that, is, that is Prabhupada's example. That's Prabhupada's example. That Krishna, it's not that you know, Prabhupada just liked Krishna consciousness, or he just liked Krishna, or he just liked preaching, but it was his life. And he, he dedicated himself fully to it. And in order for any movement to continue on, there has to be people who do that. And the more people, the better. Because uh, the books don't distribute themselves. Last time I checked. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's not that the Bhagavatam sets just, all right, you guys aren't distributing me, so I'm going to hit the road here. I'm going to walk to Balboa Park. And, you know, I mean, it's possible, but doesn't happen we haven't seen yet but you know the Bhagavatam stopping people hey hey would you like me I'm only 250 you know please take me right please take me home and read me so um, there's a there's a there's a there's a BBT warehouse full of uh, Prabhupada's books in Los Angeles you know huge warehouse you know I don't know I haven't been there for a while maybe I should go for inspiration purposes but soon but I saw pictures of this huge, you know, stacked up to the ceiling, full of Prabhupada's books. And of course, we're gradually trying to distribute them. Um, but yeah, they, they definitely won't distribute themselves. And uh, therefore, Prabhupada wanted devotees to distribute them uh, more and more and more. And as one devotee wrote Prabhupada one time, Oh, Prabhupada, I hope you're pleased by this book distribution. And Prabhupada said, Yes, I'm very pleased. And he says, Go on increasing my my pleasure more and more and more. So uh, yeah, uh, um, you know the Murdungan cartels just don't go out and you know on Harinam and the books don't distribute themselves. So it's required that you know devotees become enthusiastic about that, and they will not feel bored at all. There's no boredom in book distribution or Harinam. <laughs> That's the last thing. There, there might be all other types of emotions, but they're not boredom. Or at least, yeah, there shouldn't be. Um, and in this way, our the, the 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 our our heart, which has been like a reservoir, uh, a deep reservoir full of desires, material desires. Of you know nadanam nadanam nasunaram of of wealth of women of fame of of just everything of this world all of these desires that have been there and plans not just desires but plans because one you have a desire one we have a desire and then two plan it okay how am I going to execute this 
So the reservoir in our heart that's been full for so long of material desires, it will be expunged. All these desires will be cleansed. Just as it says, like, I think it's in Krishna book where it says, like, the uh, uh, pond is, is muddy, and then you, you know, have these uh, monsoon, the rain coming. It clear, clears up the pond, you know, makes it clear. So, what it, chapter 20. So, th so through the force of Krishna consciousness, of the cleansing waters of Krishna, it, it expunges all this and becomes clear. Um, so, and specifically by engaging in, uh, in devotional service and, yeah, preaching is very important for in that process. Uh, just like Prabhupada says in the fourth canto, he says that um, those who are spreading the message of the Bhagavatam and, and Bhagavad Gita and other books or preaching it, they're, they're very, they very easily become free from maya. Prabhupada says it. So, um, so yeah, that's the process. And by doing that, we're able to appreciate Vrindavan. So it's not, you know, Prabhupada, you know, Prabhupada knew exactly what he was doing. It's not that he was just, okay, well, all of you can't appreciate Vrindavan, so therefore I'm going to engage you in preaching. No. <laughs> but um, Prabhupada understood, and as we read earlier about Jula Yatra, that by engaging in... Um, Specifically, by, by having a cleansed heart, one can appreciate Vrindavan. And how does that happen? By spreading the Sankirtan movement, one, one will cleanse their heart. Uh, and specifically, there's so many songs by Acharyas who says that we have to go, th we have to approach Shushi Gornitai. That's how we are um, able to appreciate Vrindavan, right? By getting the mercy of Lord Nityananda, we're able to be free from these material desires, and then we could appreciate Vrindavan. And how do we get the mercy of Lord Nityananda? We have to follow in his footsteps. Um, and not how Srila Prabhupada would say sometimes of whatever, I'm sure there's many, you know, great souls and the they have that uh what is it, Nityananda Vamsa or whatever, the disciplic line or the family line because he had a wife, Janava. Yeah, several sons. So there's a line, actually. There's a line that you could be in. And I'm in Nityananda Prabhu's line. I'm not in Nityananda But somebody, you know, they could claim I'm in Nityananda Prabhu's line. But, okay, that may be there. Good. That's nice. <laughs> but um, they should also follow Lord Nityananda's uh, example. And that is to, to preach, to, to, to spread Krishna consciousness, to approach people like Jagan Mada. There's plenty of them around. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> just like, yeah, no, no unemployment in the Hare Krishna movement. Don't worry. Plenty of work to be done. Many lifetimes. Um, but just like we would go out on Harnam and uh, downtown, and we, you know, we go out and, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of Jagas and Madas down there. So, you know, at the end, Bhajan Ryan, some would say, Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, delivering all the Jagais and Madais, of which there is no shortage. <laughs> so there's no shortage. Um, so it's a good age to get the mercy of Lord Nityananda, Kali Yuga. Good time for it. And it's, uh, you could say, the, the, the capitals of the world, such as, say the capitals of Kali or the capitals of sin or the capitals of material enjoyment are good places like San Diego, New York City, Los Angeles, Paris, you know, whatever, Australia, different places. They're, they're, they're good places for devotees to be because they get, they could get some special mercy from Lord Nityananda from uh, approaching these people. Um, <clears throat> and then if we do that, we're not in the foolish situation that, uh, you know, Pranjana uh, find himself in. And uh, we're able to uh, be successful. <coughs> but after all, this is all, I mean, this is all really depending on the state of our heart or the state, yeah, the state 
Sarvasya Chaham Hridi Sanda Vishnam Atasmitir Ganamapohanamcha. So Krishna is in the heart, and according to our particular desires, our aspirations, what we want, what we don't want, Krishna will inspire us in certain ways. So if we want to, re to remember Maya, Krishna says, okay, you want to remember Maya, then here you go. I'll give you a full, um, I'll give you a full uh, dose of Maya. You know, you want to remember Maya, here you go. Or you want to remember me? Okay, I'm helping you. Here you go. Or you want to f you want to forget me? You want to forget Maya? So that's also if we want to forget illusion, then Krishna will help us forget the material world. Just like right, there's that famous shloka in the Nectar Devotion by Rupa Goswami. He says, if you ever if you have a desire to uh, <coughs> enjoy materialistic friendship, love, society, all that, <laughs> then don't go see Krishna, who is standing on the bank of the Yamuna, Keshi Ghat, you know, very beautiful with his you know, peacock feather playing the flute, and says the moonshine is uh, lightening his, his lips, and a you know, very, very beautiful threefold bending form, he's standing there, then don't go see Krishna. So of course, Rupa Goswami is saying, go see Krishna. <laughs> It's just a you know, different way of saying it. And Prabhupada would relate this to deity worship in the Nectar Devotion. He says, oh, don't go, don't go see Radhagiri Dara if you want to enjoy all these things. Um, so, yeah, it will work if we, sub if we, if we put ourselves into the um, fire of devotional service. Uh, but it's a very delicate thing because sometimes sometimes we don't want that. Sometimes we may find ourselves not wanting Krishna consciousness. Um, so we so the idea is to fan the spark or fan the fire of our desire to want Krishna more and more and more. But if we're not careful in that process, it, 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 it's a little tricky because you know, Krishna, <laughs> he tries again and again and again and again. But if someone's just so stubborn, I mean, parents have this, parents have this, uh, this experience that, okay, I'm going to tell my child, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, right? And just, and they really, by their example sometimes, probably nowadays not most of the time, but by their example, by their teachings, that they're really pushing their child in a certain direction. And then eventually if the child, uh, no, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it, and then fine, th th then the, uh, the parents say, okay, fine, you know, what can I, I just go, you know, do whatever you, you know, do whatever you want to do. So, yeah, Krishna, I mean, he tries and tries and tries and tries and tries, but eventually, or a lot of the times, say, okay, fine, you just want to, you know, <laughs> okay, go. Of course, he never leaves us, but still, it's, we don't want to do that, you know. So, okay, the time's up. Does anybody have any, um, yes, questions, uh, comments? Just, you were talking about the family. Yes. Um, so, when we could travel, I visited Burma once, twice a year for a number of years, and it's still going on. It's exactly like Prabhupada said. They save it like soy sauce. Mm. And they just, you know, out in front of, not every house, but many houses, mm. especially in the villages. And they just, everything decomposes and they have a spout and they open up and the whole place smells. Mm. So um, it's a fact. Um, this is quite loud. But the, um, uh, where I stay, Diamond Apartments, <laughs> the <laughs> Diamond in the Rough, um, the, they have some dogs. So I, f this guy was, I said, look, your dogs are driving me nuts. I said, you know, can we, I can't think. Can you do something about this? And he said, well, the smell of your cooking drives me nuts. Mm. <laughs> and it was, he said, what is that milky smell? You know, it's ghee. I have a little ghee, you know, little, mm. little spices, you know. It's a nice smell. But he said, he said, oh, it's all, I have to shut my windows. So there it is. Um, my question was, um, 
you were saying about being bored at Mangalarti or for our book distribution, you know. Um, you know, we are jaundiced. We are with a material disease. So am I just supposed to feel guilty that what kind of person am I if, you know, if, if my mind wanders or I fall asleep in Bhagavatam class or, you know, I'm thinking about what's for breakfast in the middle of Mangalarti, you know, uh, you know, do we ladle guilt on people? Where's the line between, you know, okay, I'm a fallen soul and that's just the way I am or sometimes, you know, what, you got the idea? Yeah. Okay. This is so, why is it so loud every time? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, there's, yeah, we shouldn't, I mean, feel guilty. I mean, I guess sometimes, uh, well, there's yeah, there's healthy guilt. There's amount of, oh, you know, guilty. But that, that, that guilt, that guilty, that feeling bad should inspire us to move forward. Not, oh, I'm feeling guilty. Let me just kind of, you know, move back. Let me just, you know, should increase our, our, our endeavors. Um, yeah, so that's there. Uh. Yeah, and devotees, I, yeah, sometimes, I don't know, some people, like some was telling me, that there's devotees, sh they, were, they were telling me that, oh, you know, like, I don't know how you guys do it. Like, you, you wait all morning long, and then you have breakfast. I mean, breakfast is like 9 o'clock or something. That. You get up at 4, that's like many hours. And I, had a, I heard another devotee tell me, another Brahmachari years ago, he said, yeah, that's like difficult. You know, you, you get new guys, and you know, bring them in, and you know, wake them up, and then, for like so many hours, you know, they can't eat anything, and of course sometimes they do, maybe, but, um, you know, have some care, you know, whatever, go, have something, I don't know, it's a piece of sandash or burfi or something, sometimes they do, but he was saying, oh, you know, he was kind of wanting to start his own, not movement, but kind of temple thing, and he was saying, yeah, you know, when I have kind of my retreats, and, you know, I'll have some, whatever, I don't know, tea and biscuits or something, whatever he was saying. Not, ne not necessarily caffeine, but saying it's a big struggle. And uh, anyways, so this devotee was telling me, yeah, that, yeah, I just, I don't know how you guys do it. And, you know, what I do is I just have my, you know, breakfast for, and then I you know, engage in the chanting and all that, and your mind's more peaceful. Anyways, we don't do that here, but... Um, yeah, this idea of thinking of breakfast or thinking about whatever, you know, mind could go, you know, a million different directions. So it is challenging. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that to control the mind is more difficult controlling the the wind, but it's possible by by detachment and practice. And he also says all of difficult things to conquer, right? I'm the mind. So it's understood it's difficult. Um so yeah, if our mind wanders, if we feel boredom, this and that yeah, we may feel some guilt, but that should encourage us to move forward. But yeah, how do we deal with that? I mean, there's different ways. Like my, sp there's Christian conscious ways, and then there's unChristian conscious ways to deal with it. My Chris, uh, my spiritual master, when he was searching, eventually found Prabhupada. But when he was searching, he went to some kind of Zen retreat or something, and he said that when he was there, you know, there's a bunch of young men there, and he was meditating, you know, and looking at the wall or something like that. And, the yeah, the dot on the wall or something. And then he said that the instructor, if anybody was falling asleep, you know, he would come with a stick and, you know, and, and hit them. Yeah, so that's good. Keep you yeah, that'll keep you away. <laughs> so that's not our process, obviously. We're not going to, you know. <laughs> Gargamuni with the squirt gun. Yeah, so if you fall asleep, you just get a good. Yeah, because you'd have a, you'd have like a devotee, you know, waiting, you know, see, okay, right, right when he starts to fall asleep, okay, get him, you know. So they're probably having some fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who could shoot the devotee? So, um, so yeah, if, like you mentioned, there's this idea of jaundice. So jaundice, as, as Rupa Goswami says, that, okay, uh, naturally, we should have the, the Christian consciousness is all sweet, just like sugar candy. And generally, people are attracted to sh sugar, sweet things. So it should be sweet. Everything about it should be sweet. 
Um, in other words, there, there should be no boredom, no, no lack of interest. It should be enlivening, all of it. So, okay, what if it's not? Well, as Bajanarayan Swami said, and then and there's some jaundice. So how do you get rid of jaundice? Well, you keep on taking sugar candy. And therefore, uh, Rupa Goswami says to just engage in the process every single day, carefully, and gradually that will go away. All of those things will go away. One will feel uh, completely inspired by it. One will have a taste for it. Just like Prabhupada, he would say about himself in relation to his books, he would say, why do people like my books? He said, because I have a taste for it. I have a taste for writing. And he said, and what's the, what's the proof I have a taste is that I get up every night, you know. Very, I would say, I don't know, this, uh, he gets up. He went, a lot of devotees, I was hearing different things. He get 10, wake up at 11.30, do the translation work. But when everybody is sleeping, he probably would be up translating. So he had a taste. You can't do that if you don't have a taste. So gradually, uh, gradually that will manifest. And, you know, as the all types of cliche sayings and cheesy sayings go, right? Like, oh, every, it's true, but every journey, right? What does it start with? It begins with the first step. It begins with the first step. It's true. It's, I know, <laughs> You know, you, wa you take a long walk, you take a long hike or something, it's like, oh, if you think about it, oh, that's really far, you know, what, up to solid or whatever. You know, if you walk fast, at least an hour, if m maybe two, you know. So, oh, that's too long. But, you know, step by step, and you just, you're gradually making progress, and then you're there. So same with Christian. It may seem difficult. Oh, how am I supposed to have a taste for everything? I mean, okay, maybe I have a taste for, you know, Prasad, or maybe a taste for kirtan, or but other stuff I can't really, you know, maybe a taste, but everything, yeah, over time. So, all right, I think maybe Vijay Prabhu and Vaikuntha Prabhu had something. Kapila Dev, he said that uh, by rendering devotional service and hearing for a long time, eventually one becomes free of attraction for the. Material nature, because we're attracted, we're still conditioned. We're attracted to the material nature. Therefore, the you know the mind thinks, "Oh, this is boring." You know, the mind wants to go out and you know <laughs> have and enjoy the material world. Yeah. But that, actually, for a devotee, that's boring. Yeah. yeah. So we just have to surrender. Then. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Balaram. I appreci appreciated your presentation about how we have to kind of not be so interested in the non-devotional things in our hearts so that we can have appreciation for the devotional activities. We have to kind of give that up, otherwise there's the boredom or the complacency, which is such a common thing in the course of trying to engage in devotional service, right? It's something we struggle with. And it, your use of the word expunge just kind of caught me because... Uh, my niece is an attorney, and she works for a nonprofit. And her job for some years has been helping felons who have done their time, quote unquote, expunge mm. their records. Because she mm. said, like, until they do that, they can't go forward in life because it's just like this anchor that keeps them in a very downtrodden position. Yeah. So just that kind of until they do what? get their records expunged. The word Balaram had used expunged. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. So yeah, so in the sense he was presenting it like we have to expunge the material desires from our heart, our, our attraction to them, so that we, you know, can actually appreciate the devotional activities. Life. Yeah, start our real life. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's a great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, felon. You have a felon. Yeah, you can't. It's hard to get a job. It's hard to get a house. Can't. It's so difficult to do so many things. You know. So yeah, if you get it expunged, it's like a big uh, weight. You know, anchor lifted off of you. You know, so similar. Yeah, to to get all these you know material desires and hankerings and all whatever is there to just get it off is actually like a big, you know, big relief. You know, kind of <laughs> you could feel the elevation taking place. Maybe you know, start. elevation means anyways, whatever. Yeah. So all right. Okay. All right. Grantraj Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai.